Welcome back to Laker News. I'm Reagan Blissett. And I'm Kyle Bendis. Today is Friday, October 7th. Students living in the off-campus apartments need to lock their doors. Two reports of break-ins have happened in the last week at 48 West Apartments. A man allegedly broke into the apartments and ran away when he was found. The victims of the break-ins were shaken but unharmed. 48 West advises students to lock their doors and is offering siding door stoppers. You usually expect celebrities to endorse products, but that's not the case for Chloe Grace Moretz. She's known for her roles in Neighbors 2, If I Stay, and more. She is now traveling the country in order to support Hillary Clinton. Hi, how are you? Um, Chloe Grace Mortis stopped at Grand Valley to campaign for Hillary Clinton. The College of Democrats hosted the event and took the opportunity to boost voter registration. Uh, we're just trying to get voter registration up, and obviously Clintons have a lot of connections in the Democratic Party, and so they were able to get this amazing, amazing actress out here and come out and get voter registration up and help get us people out there in the field. Hundreds of students came out to not only register, but also to get their picture with the actress. Mordez met Clinton when she was only 16 years old and was instantly inspired. She was someone who I looked up to as a young woman. I had a, you know, I grew up with a single mom. I grew up with a family of four older brothers, and I looked at this woman who was so powerful and so elegant and so um, well-spoken. Mordez said that the Grand Valley crowd was by far the most energized crowd that she saw across Michigan. For Laker News, I'm Stephen Barwin. The College Democrats has been going door to door to make sure everyone has registered by October 11th. On Sunday, Bishop McCoyack blessed the soon to be home for St. Luke's University Parish. Hundreds of parishioners prayed and ate together while reflecting on the journey it took to get this far. Since its beginning in 2007, St. Luke's has been without an actual church building. The parish has been holding mass in a former dollar store and the Cook DeWitt Center for the past nine years. This new church will sit on 42nd Street, across from the Campus View Cottages. To GVSU students, this is more than a building, but an opportunity to expand their ministry. Having a new, be not only a new beginning, but a fresh start in a sense here um, at an actual church, I think that there's a lot of room for growth, and that I think that we'll see uh, a growth in the college ministries that St. Luke's offers here. So Many college students can expect to hit the books, but what about hitting the polls? The presidential election is almost a month away, and Grand Valley State University is making it convenient for students to register to vote. At Grand Valley State University, students are lining up for National Voter Registration Day. By the Cook Carolyn Clock Tower, students are registering to vote with the Michigan Department of State's mobile unit. We've brought the Secretary of State mobile branch office to Grand Valley's campus to assist uh, students and registering to vote. The mobile unit is also assisting Michigan residents that live out of town. We're really emphasizing making sure that students know that they don't have to drive all the way back home, um, that they can get those absentee ballots here. Unfortunately, students from out of state will have to go to their designated Secretary of State back home to register. If they would like to change their address to an Allendale address, then they can definitely come out and talk to us and we can work on that as well. Melissa Baker Busmar is the Associate Director for Civic Engagement and is running the event. Her main goal it's a multifaceted goal. We obviously want to get as many students registered to vote as possible. We're actually trying to exceed CMU. They had 300 students register on their campus when the mobile unit visited. We want to blow them out of the water. They also want to raise awareness by reminding students the importance of registering to vote and getting out on Election Day. I think that in the past there has been a sense of um, just kind of disenfranchisement as if their votes don't count. Um, but we're really here to say they absolutely in Allendale, I'm Blair Thompson. Art Prize 2016 has over a thousand entries for this year's event. The DeVos Convention Center is a central location that artists strive to show at. Maher Kachatrian's piece, The Smoke, took over a year to make and interactively engages with its audience with seven beautifully anguished women. It's trying to show that the smoking, it could be seductive and addictive, but um, it's definitely not good and, you know, I, my outcome definitely wanted to see that the people would actually reading the statement looking at the painting would actually quit successfully and not start smoking. His piece made it into the top 25 of the two-dimensional artwork but he did not make it past the second round. He plans to come back again and vie for the title. The winner of Art Prize 8 will be revealed Friday night. Sports reporter Paul McPherson has been covering this past week for sports. Paul, how did the Lakers do this week? Well, Reagan, there weren't a lot of teams in action, but there were a couple Lakers teams who had some games this week. 
After hosting two big conference wins last week, the women's soccer team had their last game outside the GLIAC this Wednesday. The number one ranked Lakers took on the Florida Tech Panthers, trying to extend their eight game winning streak, while the Panthers were trying to make a name for themselves after a weak schedule kept them out of the national tournament last season. There was a lot of back and forth action early, with both teams managing just a few shots towards the goal. The Panthers had a couple of set pieces in the middle of the first half that threatened the Lakers, but goalkeeper Jennifer Steinaway held strong. The Lakers had a couple great chances of their own, but still, the game stayed scoreless. In the 30th minute, the Lakers finally broke through after a counterattack led by senior Kendra Stauffer ended up in an own goal by the Panthers. The Lakers took a 1-0 lead into the half. Early on in the second half, the Panthers got one back on a counterattack of their own, where Kira McCarthy buried her seventh of the season. The Lakers dominated much of the rest of the game, getting chance after chance but not managing to get one past junior goalkeeper Carolyn Prisco. With just four minutes remaining, a costly turnover by Steinaway ended up on the foot of McCarthy, who then shot one through the hands of Steinaway to score which proved to be the game-winning goal. The Panthers win 2-1, ending the Lakers' 34-game unbeaten streak. Elsewhere in a quiet week of Lakers sports, the football team took on their biggest challenge so far when they took on Ohio Dominican in Columbus. The Lakers came away with a 24-21 win, with Devin McKissick clinching the game with an interception on the five-yard line with just 17 seconds left. This week, the Lakers will be taking on arch-rival Ferris State at Lubber Stadium. The women's tennis team had two matches this weekend as they took on Hillsdale and Wayne State. The Lakers came away with two wins, winning 7-2 and 5-4. Junior Alexa Sweeney went undefeated 4-0 at both singles and doubles over the weekend. Thanks, Paul. The Grand DIY team is teaching you how to make your apartment ready for fall in this week's DIY video. Thanks for watching this week of Laker News. If you have a news story, please make sure to like our Facebook page, GVTV Laker News, and let us know. Tune in next week for more Grand Valley news. Anchor up, Lakers, and have a good weekend.